Hey everybody, it's Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day's Video Tips, your source for tips and step-by-step -step instruction on the latest version of Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and finish up our series on project service automation, or our initial series on project service automation anyway. It, up until this point, we've kind of talked more about the project management piece and you know how you can add time and how you can set up your projects and define your different resources and, and kind of walk you through what that looks like when you add tasks and define tasks. Now we're going to take a step back and we're going to talk about this through kind of the sales process because that's one of the other aspects of this, of this item that they've brought in is the capabilities to tie these projects into your sales process. So when you're quoting an opportunity, you can add project lines to your opportunity and then transfer for that information to a quote and then once you generate an order you generate basically kind of a project contract that has information that is tied back to it so as that project is evolving and you're actually doing stuff with that project you now can come back and you can have that information be brought back into it so you can see exactly where you're at from that contract standpoint and you can define things like how often you want to bill and what resources and those types of things so it gives you the capabilities to define exactly what this project looks like from start to finish so not only can you define how you're going to manage it, but you can also create an opportunity for the project, then manage how your pro your what your profitability looks like as you're moving forward with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this from, from inside CRM. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just hop into project services. So I'm going to go into project service and I'm going to go into opportunities. And so I still have my concept of opportunities within the application itself, but now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new opportunity. So we'll go ahead and define this as an opportunity and I'll just call this um, And we're going to associate this with a, an account. And so in this case, we'll just go ahead and use Alpine Ski Shop. And purchase time frame, we could just go ahead and say this quarter, US dollars. We're going to use the US bill rate um, price list that we've already actually defined for this application itself. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're going to define a budget amount. We'll say the budget amount is roughly $200,000. And then from there, we can go ahead and we can define purchase processes unknown. And then we'll just go ahead and if we wanted to add any additional information to this, we could at this point. But at this point, we'll just go ahead and hit save. So one of the key things that you're going to notice now is there is actually a new form that is associated with project service. So you will see underneath your form that there is a project um, information form. This will contain all of your specific information about the project itself. Obviously, being a form, we could switch back to any of the other forms at any time and have that information associated with it as we wanted to work through. Now, the major difference that you're going to see with this version of the form is you now have this concept of project based information. So project-based opportunity lines and product-based opportunity lines. So your product-based opportunity lines are going to be the things that are very similar to what you would see in a normal situation. Your project-based opportunity lines are going to be opportunity lines that are specific for this type of project. So maybe planning, budgeting, you know, whatever that situation might be from within that project itself. So for example, maybe we're doing a CRM implementation. So for the CRM implementation, I'm going to go ahead and add an existing product and we'll just go ahead and say CRM. And we'll just say that this is going to be a CRM online professional standard user. And now I can edit this if I need to. And we're at three months uh, for 10 users. Let's go ahead and edit this to 12 months for 15 users. And it will update my information and I can see that my quantities it change accordingly. Now I could go into my opportunity lines, which would be more of my project based line situations, and I could go ahead and add a opportunity based project line. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and call this maybe project planning. Say that the customer budget is going to be $10,000. And we will make this a fixed price because that's just what we're going to charge for project planning and then save it. And I could continue to add this information kind of as needed. 
So now you can see that I've added some additional product and, and items into this. So I've got my opportunity project based line items that I'm working with, and now I have my product based line items. Now, really, I'm just working with opportunities and quotes and orders and, and items that are converted to or working with from, from, a, from an application standpoint. So it's really no different than what you've been working with. I can see that my total amount is automatically calculated based upon the line items that I've added into this. So now I can go ahead and generate a quote on this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a project quote. This will go out and create a quote record. It'll define the individual information that I want. So this will automatically populate the information based upon what I've put in here. So I'll give this just a second to kind of populate that information and work with it from here. So in here now it shows me, you know, what's happening, shows me uh, profitable information, analyzes the quote, kind of tells some of the baseline information. Now don't worry so much about the, the budgeted information and the, and the scheduled information telling me that I've exceeded budgets and stuff. There's a lot of calculated fields and roll-up fields in here that haven't necessarily been updated yet. And that's part of what you're looking at from those individual situations. So that's part of what you're seeing. So down here you can see the customer budget that this is, this is a roll-up field that hasn't necessarily been rolled up yet. Yet. If I were to go ahead and roll this field up, that's going to go ahead and roll this information. Once I roll this information up and I save my changes, then all of my calculated fields and information will update. And now you can see that I'm within my budget because my quoted amount and my budgetary amount are the same from within that situation. So this is your standard kind of quotation method from an application standpoint. This gives you all of your, your individual quoting items that you could be working with. So this is where I could now go ahead and just like I saw with the opportunity, I have a new kind of quote version of this. Now, one of the things that's a little bit different is because these have what are called project-based line items, I now have the capabilities to go into these individual line items and I can edit these based upon my specific needs and items. So I know that this is a, you know, an item that is for development. I know that we're including time, we're including expenses, we're including fees. I also know that we have what the quoted amount and what the budgeted amount is. As I'm going through, I can actually, as we know individual things, we can start adding create uh, individual items. So I could start adding specific details on this if I wanted to. You know, what is the specific around this thing? So this is going to be a time thing that is going to be added for a developer as they've worked on this situation. The category of this is going to be a timesheet or a time entry. We know that the developer is going to start working on this project, you know, during a specific time. Um, so we can go ahead and define what that time frame might be. We would then be able to see, determine when this might end. So I could look at this from an endings perspective and say, oh, it's going to end probably in November. Um, how are we working with it? What is the quantity? We know the developer is going to work, you know, roughly, let's say 175 hours on this and then save it. And now I can see that for the details, it kind of repopulates this information as it updates it, and it will define what that individual information looks like. So it'll show me specifically what this quote looks like, the, uh, the quoted amount, the billing information, and so on and so forth. This is also where I can generate invoicing information. Now, you don't necessarily have to you know, define what some of this information looks like, but this is where you now have the capabilities to go into that information, see what you're looking at, and then kind of define that information from there. So this will Give you kind of your updated information so this is where i can see now that i actually have gone in and i've added some of that information from this developer perspective i can see what this item is i can see what the estimated cost is and i can start to see the quoted amount based upon this scenario and this can all come in with whether or not i've actually gone through budget now once i create projects and i define project you know items associated with this information i would also have the capabilities to define some of that information in here but this gives you the capabilities to see you know exactly Exactly what you want to work with from an application standpoint and how these individual things are going to break out and then also give you a really nice opportunity for cost analysis. So the next part of this is to actually go out and create kind of what's called a project contract. And a project contract is really just an order that has project-based information associated with it. So if I were to go ahead and take this, this quote and close this quote, I can close this quote as a one quote. This will go out and do the same thing that from a CRM functionality standpoint that it's always done. It's going to go out and it's going to create the order that's associated with this. And this order is also what is considered what's called a project contract. And so this will have all of the contextual-based information that that's that's associated with this so now i could come into here and i can see that within this 
order information that it now has my project information associated with it. It brings in all of my individual project lines and contract lines that are attached to it. And now I can actually, within these contract lines, I can start associating these contract lines with specific projects within the application itself. I also have a means to be able to monitor contract performance. So as this contract is associated with, you know, maybe different projects and, and different items from within the application, I would now have the capabilities to start seeing what those individual situations look like. So for example, if I were to come in here, um, maybe I have a situation where I want to, you know, manage the development information associated with this. Um, so first and foremost, I can go ahead and I can open up this development situation. You know, we talked about this in the in the quote version of it, but now I would have the capabilities to come in here and actually define these individual contract lines and associate these with specific portions of the project itself. So I could come in here and I could say maybe the project associated with this is maybe one that we already have. So I'll go ahead and see if I can find a project that we already have that I can associate this with. Let's see, tip of the day sample. Now, I don't necessarily have any contract line item details that are associated with this at this point, but this would now give me the capabilities to add those individual items um, for, the, for the item that I'm working with. So this is where I could now come in and define what it is. So I could say that we've got a time entry. The role is going to be associated with a developer. The category is going to be a timesheet entry. Start this on August 1st. Potentially run through... November 30th, and we know that it's going to be 175 hours. And now it associates this as a chargeable time that's attached to this development task that's, that's associated with this project. Now, I could go in at this point, you know, once I've gone through everything and defined what's going to work with this, I could go ahead and I could confirm this project. And now I've got this as a, as a confirmed option. So now if I were to look at kind of what we'd done in the past from a time frame perspective, you would now be able to come in and start looking at things that would be billed back to these information. So I've actually had some time that's been entered into this project already, but I can come into here now and I can see that I have time that has been spent on this um, that would show me that how much effort has been driven into this. If somebody actually goes out and bills information associated with this individual item, once somebody creates a timesheet entry and that timesheet entry is approved, that would now be added to this. So for example, I could come into here, I could go into project Project service. I could go to time entries. I could add a time entry for my project. Let's say that it's eight hours. And for a developer, we'll go ahead and save this. We will submit it. And then once it's approved, then it would show up on there. And I am an approver, so I can go to project approvals. I can approve this project. And so now that my approvals have been approved or my timesheet entries have been approved, now I can actually go back to project contracts. I can go up to my tip of the day sample option and I can look at contract performance and I can see that my information has actually been associated with that. So time has been built against that. And so I can now start to see where we're at in regards to the grand scheme of things. And I can see how we are in process to the billing process as well. So think of this, you know, from kind of a, a sales persona perspective, as you're selling these big projects and you're getting ready to implement these big projects, you now have the entire process that you can go in and track and, and associate, and then even start to work with as you're billing time across this and handle how you want to do billings and in, in some of those individual situations. So that's going to do it for our look at 
project service automation. I hope over the course of the last three videos, um, they've kind of all tied things together now and, and given you an idea on what you can truly do with this. From a project management perspective, I mean, it's a wonderful tool. There's there's it is a little bit of configuration and setup and some of those things that you have to do to kind of get it initiated. But what I would highly recommend, like we've talked about in the other videos, is just spend some time with the sample data. That'll get you started on kind of a nice moving point, and then you can kind of go from there. So again, everybody, thanks a lot for watching. For all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this has been Derek saying thank you very much. Take care, everybody, and have a good one.